Hey everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Welcome back to this YouTube channel on narcissism. And this video is on narcissism. So I'm going to ask a question, see what you think. But the question is, do the big, big, big innovations of our world, do they require narcissism to happen? Let's take that on. So the last 20 years in human innovation, let's face it, 25 years, have been absolutely stunning. At my age, I can look back to a childhood and adolescence of rotary dial phones, no answering machines, only three channels on the TV, no cable, no VCR, TV that signed off at 1 a.m. In fact, the town I grew up in didn't even allow for touch tone phone service for many years, even after big cities had it, right? We used those purple mimeographs in school that were hand cranked. There were no photocopiers. I thought that when we finally could do things like play Space Invaders on an Atari, it was the fanciest thing I'd ever seen. When I went to college in 1984, a Facebook was that book made of paper that had all the pictures of us freshmen and the cities that we came from. I typed my college papers on a typewriter and I'd correct the mistakes with whiteout. The first time I ever encountered email was at the beginning of graduate school, right? So all of the things we see in our lives now happen in pretty short order. And then life and innovation happen and it happened fast. Innovation has always been happening in human history, right? Television, telephone, radio, cars, movable type. And at the time those innovations came out, they were just as astonishing as a smartphone that's in your pocket, right? And, it, and a smartphone to me still is really astonishing. I don't even need to name names. You're going to know exactly who I'm talking about. But if we look at a list of the current big name innovators in our world, most, not all, but absolutely most. And yes, I am talking about the world of AI, crypto, tech, social media, biotech, those people who think you're going to live forever, biohackers, robotics, cars that don't need gas, cars that fly, cars that don't need people to drive them. You have to be one grandiose mother to believe that those things could happen. And many of the folks that made these happen, like I said, most, but not all, but the majority of them behind the successful launches of the biggest innovations out there, in the past hundred years, I'd argue through all of society, have had a lot of narcissistic qualities or full-blown narcissistic personalities. So again, going back to the original question, is narcissism required for this kind of big innovation? And I actually think that the answer to this, sadly, may be yes. That the big innovations, the people behind them, require narcissism. It's a shame but to do this, you not only have to have a dream that is beyond the pale, a computer that will fit in your pocket, a car that doesn't need a person driving it, things like blockchain, and then truly believe that you can execute it and that you have the right to execute it. Then you have to have the audacity to march into rooms and feel like you deserve the money to execute the idea. And then you have to have the smarts to execute the idea and fight back on anyone else who might be coming in on your innovation. The grandiose vision may be where it starts, but the entitlement and arrogance and fightiness, I guess, are often how it gets executed. It's also the low empathy. So there's little regard for how their demands, the innovators' demands, may be affecting other people, like maintaining unreasonable demands from work teams, such as stay all night, sleep on the floor, work constantly, don't have a life so you can bring this innovation to fruition. And remember, most innovative dreamers do not bring their grandiose dreams to fruition. It's only a small handful, a tiny, tiny, tiny handful of people who pull these grandiose dreams off successfully. And they are the ones we read about on social media and the news. Listen, the innovators who don't manage to pull it off those are our victimized, vulnerable narcissists pounding their fists at the world and wondering why their great idea never got its turn. It sucks, but it's true. But the innovators who manage to pull off their big, big ideas successfully, when they first talk about their ideas, they kind of sound a little out there, right? Because once it happens, they actually believe they're hype. 
and so does everyone else. And so we have to start listening to their bizarre proclamations about life and politics and business. And since they either built or own the platforms we are stuck listening to, we're kind of stuck having to, having to listen to them because they own the platforms. Historically, this all tracks. Like folks like Edison, Mr. Lightbulb, were called out historically as being very jerky and as awful people. I don't think we have historical records on the personality of Gutenberg, the guy who developed the movable type and the ability to start printing multiple versions of something, but maybe, who knows? Then there's that whole great man theory, right? That history is made by this small subset of naturally selected so-called great men, men of course, who held certain traits that made, that turned them into history makers like courage or intellect but probably lots of narcissism. In fact, most of the folks in our history books are narcissistic. But where does this leave us? Is the only place to get something like a smartphone from a narcissistic person? Listen, every time I use my iPhone, I'm still astonished that we once turned to an encyclopedia or the library, and it would take quite a long time to get a factoid that I can pull from my phone in one second while I'm waiting in line to pick up the groceries I pre-ordered using that same phone that will ultimately navigate me to my destination. It is absolutely extraordinary. What has happened with all these innovations, whether we like it or not, is extraordinary. But it raises a different issue. Human beings are naturally oriented towards this kind of innovation. We are. That's it makes us it's a unique species, right? And the innovators are narcissistic as a rule. It almost seems like the qualities of narcissism, and even to some degree psychopathy, are preconditions to really hit it out of the park in the innovation game. They, a person with a great idea who's grandiose and entitled and ultimately has power, money, and influence, it's never enough for them, that's the problem. But in a way, the successful innovators are portrayed as heroes, and that's risky. We're told that these folks are good people, people to aspire to be like, people we want to be close to, maybe even have as partners. And that's where it all falls apart. Because yeah, for the innovators, their work has resulted in major leaps and bounds in how we live. It's rewritten history. I'm not saying all these innovations are good. Some of these have harmed our planets in many ways, and some of these innovations do not benefit everyone. But sure, yeah, for them, it worked out. However, we also need to learn that those qualities, the personality qualities that bring on innovation, the grandiosity, the get it done at whatever cost, the obsessiveness, the I don't care who I destroy in making this happen, that to the innovator, the innovation is more important than any person and the conception of themselves as greater and mightier than anyone. It may make computers in our pockets and things like that. It's not fit for human relationships. And these should not be our heroes. We can certainly admire what they created. We can have the admiration for making the impossible seem possible, for the conveniences that they have brought. Sure, we can tip a grudging hat towards all of that, but we will remain in this narcissistic mess of a world we are in if we admire them as people. Because then we normalize these patterns of narcissism. We even make them seem aspirational. Be a dick, invent some techie crypto AI thing, and then you get to live like a Bond villain in a billionaire lair or in some kind of Dr. Evil spaceship or yacht. And while 99.999% of us won't ever live like that, nor really should we, and then we turn around and give innovative, successful, grandiose people a free pass in our lives, it's tricky. And then over time, and not even over time, always, the narcissistic innovators then seem desirable. And then grandiosity, entitlement, arrogance, being a dreamer, they might seem like good partners and you know how that story ends. I actually don't think that massive scaled up innovation really ever happens without the presence of narcissism or other dark tetrad traits, such as psychopathy or Machiavellianism in the innovator. These contribute to that almost obsessive quality innovators need. 
And innovators don't get bogged down in agreeable stuff like helping other people, kindness or empathy. And they remain single-mindedly focused on changing the world, on getting into the history books, and delusionally believing that they have the right to do whatever they want. And on top of that, they do have to be really smart to boot. So basically, yeah, innovation requires narcissism. And use the device, but don't emulate or fall in love with the innovator. Would love to hear your thoughts on that. Do you think there can be massive forms of innovation, the kind of stuff that changes the world, without the innovator being a little or a lot narcissistic? Thanks again.